Uh, I'm Kate. Uh, I'm an electrical engineering rising senior here at Stanford, and I am the electrical team lead. I'm Maggie. I'm also an electrical engineering rising senior, um, and I work on the vehicle computer and general system debug. And my name is Greg. I am also a rising senior, and I am working on the battery management system for a battery pack. So uh, there, pretty much every system has gone through a major update since Arctan, our last car. Um, so uh, just to go over a couple of them, uh, the three biggest systems on the car are really um, aerodynamics, uh, the solar array, and then I suppose the electrical subsystem. Um, so aerodynamics and the solar array have uh, gone through some really major updates actually. Uh, so in terms of aerodynamics, uh, we changed the shape of Sunday, which you'll notice immediately by looking at the new car. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that Sunday is actually a lot smaller than Arctan. And uh, that's actually really good for aerodynamics because it means there's uh, a lot less air coming into contact with the car as you're driving along. Um, so as you can imagine, that makes the car a lot more efficient. Uh, so the second major subsystem I mentioned was the solar array. And uh, actually, when you look at the two cars, the solar arrays will look pretty similar. Uh, you'll see the rectangular solar uh, cells laid out in a grid formation, but what you'll notice is that on the new car there are some cells where the uh, little rectangular individual cells have been cut. Um, and that's actually a pretty new technology called dicing that we've just tried out in our car, and we uh, estimate that it'll actually help our efficiency. So that's exciting. And then last but not least is the electrical system, which we have actually completely redone since the last car. So we've consolidated um, from five distinct circuit boards uh, working on a sort of bus system, meaning no board is really in control. Uh, we've consolidated that down into two main boards, uh, the battery management system and the vehicle computer, each of which uh, is, it's very clear which board is in control of what. Um, and uh, we think that, you know, from a architecture perspective, uh, that's really going to simplify code and uh, make things a lot more nicer and uh, compact both physically and also in terms of which processor is doing what. Why did you choose this design? Um, well, in terms of the electrical system, we chose the design because we thought it would be simpler. Uh, we also moved from, previously we had been using mostly CAN as our communication protocol for all of the different little boards between um, the different parts of the car. Uh, but we moved over to Ethernet again because we thought it would make it a little bit easier for our code team and it would be um, perhaps faster. Uh, and um, the arrow and the uh, array things were all chosen for um, speed and just like we, ha we have conversations at the beginning of each cycle trying to determine what the optimal um, you know, material for our array is going to be. And of course we want to have the maximum um, size of array as we can because we want to harvest as much sunlight as we can but that sort of like directly conflicts with Arrow which wants the car to be as small as possible so we have to sort of converge on an optimal solution taking both of those into account. What is the battery made of and how does it work? Okay so the battery is made of, up of some 400 or so lithium ion cells uh, 18650s from Panasonic. They're the same the kind of cells that go into Teslas or many other electric cars these days. Uh, and we're getting them directly from Panasonic on, uh, after having them, after they're having reviewed our uh, design actually to make sure that it's actually safe enough for them to be willing to sell us the cells. Um, so we've gone through a number of safety checks with that uh, in order to ensure that um, the battery pack is as safe as we can do it. Um, I have personally been working more on the electrical side, designing the battery management system, PCB, and that involves, um, as the name would suggest, managing the battery pack, managing voltages and uh, currents, but also managing just the power flow to the rest of the car as well. And we have also been working very much in conjunction with uh, former alums who are now in industry in order to make sure that we can build a battery pack that is as safe as possible. How long does it last? Um, it depends very much on how fast you're going, uh, but depending, uh, 
probably last you around 150 to 250 miles an hour. Miles total, uh, maybe a little bit more now that the car is lighter than last year, um, but it really depends on, <laughs> if you're going 70 miles an hour, it'll obviously last a little bit less than if you're going to 20. So the car is, um, at its core, it's sort of this um, this thing called Nomex that's like a honeycomb in between um, layers of carbon fiber. So the body of the car is carbon fiber and over spring break we all stay here and build the car with the molds that we get made based on what our array is, uh, but based on what our aero team makes. And then, um, so the body of the car is carbon fiber, um, the cells are silicon, uh, in between the carbon fiber are layers of Nomex for added strength in the Z direction because carbon fiber is very strong in like the X and Y direction, but in the Z direction it can bend a little bit, but the Nomex adds to the strength. Um, and then there's also um, the bubble, which is plastic, and then there's you know paint and vinyl on top of the car after that. Uh, well, that's an interesting question. So, um, the best features on the new car, I think, is actually our, our solar array. We expect to be very good this year. So, um, our previous car, Arctan, uh, it had a decent array. The the actual individual solar module cells were pretty similar uh, to Sunday's, but um, the encapsulation, meaning the material you put over it, actually makes a really big difference. And uh, our Array team has worked a lot on that this year. And how um, you wire them up, which that has changed. Well. Uh, so, uh, essentially, trying to predict, you know, uh, way, ways to optimize, you know, when the what the angle of the light is, you know, if if the sun's just breaking the horizon, making sure you get enough power. But you also want to have maximum power when the sun's overhead, which is what it is most of the time. Um, so all those trade-offs have been. Uh, sort of considered a lot more carefully than last cycle. So I think the array is probably the strongest part of the new car. Um, we expect it to be very competitive. Um, points of failure uh, are always, you know, uh, something we look out for, but something that you also come across while testing. It's usually not what you expect. Because of course, we design <laughs> so that we don't fail. Um, but our so, team motto is test it again. It's on our trailer, so. Right. Our idea is that we test enough that uh, whatever wood break uh, does and in a controlled manner so that we can actually redesign it and make it better so that like on the race it'll actually function. Yeah, so we don't expect the mechanical structure should be just fine. Uh, yeah. We go through a lot of simulation and evaluation to make sure that's fine. Usually actually the things that break come down to the electrical system as you'd expect. Australia is a very hot place and it's also very humid at the same time. Um, so it's important to consider how to uh, waterproof and also uh, choose components that are able to take the heat. So uh, as we do testing over the summer, we'll hopefully come across some of those issues before we get there and be able to scope them out early. And on the last race, actually, our solar car was one of the very few that did not have any breakdowns whatsoever, electrical or mechanical. So, and uh, even the teams that were ahead of us uh, could not have said the same. So. Well, since it's the Outback, there usually isn't problems with um, clouds or rain. Um, but the um, we do design the car and put the bubble on a specific side, such that like hopefully as the sun traverses the sky, like we the, the shadow of the bubble like won't shade too much of the array. But obviously, if it's cloudy, we're going to get less power out of the cells. Um, and if it rains, it's an incredibly unlikely scenario. But we do try to waterproof the car as much as we can within reason. Um, I feel we, we do, we, we can wash the cells, like it's not like the water itself is inherently bad for solar cells, um, but just like the impact of like a very heavy rain could be problematic or damaging. Yeah, uh, obviously if you just had bare cells sitting in water that would be a bad situation, <laughs> but the encapsulant uh, waterproofs them essentially. Um, and it's something all the teams have to do because like Maggie said, even though it's unlikely it'll rain because we get there in October, so um, usually it's before the rainy season starts. It still has happened uh, occasionally. Some years it'll we'll get some rain during the race, so it is important to take that into consideration. The car, we usually drive it 
around 55 kilometers per hour. Yeah, um, miles, miles per hour. hour. Miles, 55 miles per hour, um, which is 80 kilometers. I think it's like 80 miles per hour. Yeah. So um, we keep the car at a constant speed while we're driving it. It's just a, a strategy thing, but about 55 miles per hour. It can, of course, go faster, but the the race is really more of a marathon than a sprint. Like you don't want to go like the absolute fastest the entire time. There's definitely like strategy and trade-offs to racing at specific speeds. Yeah, the yeah, basic idea is that the driving relationship is not um, the energy to drive relationship is not a linear one. So say you go faster for part of the race and then a slower for part of one. I mean, even if, even if it were linear, it wouldn't be a good thing. But if you were to go faster for part of the race and then slower for another part. Uh, even though you traverse the same distance, you're using a lot more energy when you're going fast and then slow than if you were to just go the same speed the entire time. Well, as you guys have seen, <laughs> the answer is zero. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. We aim to, we'll probably try to get this probably is... like 600 to 1,000 miles. Yeah. yeah, you are going on to the test car before it. the race. Yeah. Yeah. Before, going, well, so, before going to Australia, and then we'll put another couple hundred miles on the car. This is actually race, so. yeah fairly typical for us. I mean, usually we do finish the car sort of at the start of the summer, and then we spend summer driving it around and testing stuff. Yeah, so we do still have a full summer ahead of us. We usually put a couple thousand miles on by the end of the summer. We actually put a bit more on with Arctan, and that got to be problematic because there's you know. There's an area where testing helps you find problems, and then once you go past that, testing can create new problems that otherwise wouldn't have happened. So you have to balance that. I'm just from fatigue and overuse. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting question. Do you want to talk about the carbon stuff or? Um. Well, it's a very maintenance-intensive car. <laughs> uh, it's definitely very much. Uh, I mean. It is a race car and there are a lot of parts of it that are, it's not designed for durability in a certain sense. It's not designed so that you can just do whatever you want with it and it'll be perfectly fine. So for example, you can barely touch the top of the car because you'll damage the solar arrays, uh, the solar array. Um, and then typically every night, uh, like when we're not driving, we're constantly cleaning it, checking it, debugging it. Well, during test drives and when we're racing the car, we do nightly checks. Uh, basically running through the entire car to make sure that nothing, that everything is fine. Uh, we actually put the car on stands and check that all the mechanicals are still exactly where they were. Obviously none of them are going to be broken, but maybe some screws will come out. We actually uh, use this thing called Torque Putty to make sure that even the screws haven't rotated at all. And then we check all the electronics to make sure that everything is still together. And so it's quite maintenance intensive. Pretty intensive. Yeah, the battery um, pack. Um, we're basically checking the battery pack all the time. So as we drive, um, we have a wireless connection to the car over Wi-Fi, actually. Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, because it's on internet. Yes, it reports the the state of the battery pack, and we just constantly watch it because obviously the batteries are pretty important to keep tabs on. Um, so yeah. Uh, I mean, if we were if we were self, I guess that's kind of a question of how much it cost us to make it. In which terms is a of lot. sponsorships and just like everything that's been put into the car, like it's two million worth of sponsorship and work. Um, I guess usually when you sell something, you try to make a profit off of it. <laughs> <laughs> so so <laughs> upwards of two million. Um, but a question that we do field a lot is like people asking, you know, like is it practical for us to make solar cars in the future. When or, will solar cars? Yeah. Become when a thing? will solar cars become a thing? But the answer is, it's a little bit of a downer. They probably won't. Um, just because, in order to make a functioning solar car for WSC, we have to put a lot of work into making it small and lightweight and low to the ground. And like the arrow and the array all has to be like perfect. And then we have to pick really short people to drive it. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> And, and like there's there's a lot of like very specific optimizations that go into making a car that can run completely off of solar power. And your typical car doesn't really have the surface area for an array and it also has just way too much drag um, to like be able to move like at a feasible speed that people would want while also carrying a feasible amount of things that people would want and having like more than one person in the car and just 
it's not incredibly practical, but there will probably in the future, like as cars hopefully switch to being electric, then you know maybe people will be getting the electricity from solar farms and then powering more traditional looking electric cars. However, just something that's interesting, WSC does have a section of the race called mm -hmm. the Cruiser Class. Um, we always race in the Challenger Class, or we traditionally have always raced in the Challenger Class because we think the idea of actually participating in a race is a little bit more exciting. But there are, there is, there is a competition that's more design based where people make cars that look more like what you might see as a regular car and I think they're supposed to hold two to four people mm -hmm. and so you drive around in this car that maybe looks more like Prius sized or something and has an array on the top and they've designed it to be fun and you can put all kinds of interesting electronics in it and whatnot to make it more of a consumer vehicle but in reality consumer like completely solar powered cars is probably not in the cards, but maybe putting small arrays on other cars or powering them indirectly via solar power is. Uh, so our number one goal is to always not break down. Uh, just because, you know, that's, that's actually quite difficult to do. Because that's something that Surprising. depends on us and not how well other teams do. Our secondary goal is to place in the race. Obviously we want to get at least top three. We haven't achieved that maybe ever. At least it's been a long time since we have. Um, and uh, like I said, our array is very good this year. Um, so I hope we stand a chance and we'll just see when we get there and you know race our best race. So yeah. It's difficult to put like an actual placement number on it. Uh, but we definitely tried to say, like, okay, there's a lot different about this car. Let's try to see if we can achieve the same performance or slightly some percentage, small percentage performance better than our last car. Um, so we're going to try to do that. Um, yeah, things are looking pretty good so yeah, far. You can never predict what everybody else is going to do. So yeah. we're going to try to do as well as yeah. we can. But at least no breakdowns. Run a perfect race. <laughs>